Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the Center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers, practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guest today is a returning dear soul friend of the Center. Her name is Lorna Bryant, and we'll be speaking with Lorna about her contributions to the Center study group through Sanctuary with Eden. And I would now like to invite Lorna to come on screen. Hello, Lorna. Hello, Robert. It's yeah. nice to be back with you. It's been a few weeks, I think. Yes, it has. Yeah, well, welcome you. back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have a beautiful, beautiful teaching and passage to uh, explore together today. It begins with uh, a quote that overlaid the graphic that says the following. In the end, it was the depth of pain she experienced that led her into the most profound state of love, end quote. And then you expand on that by sharing the following. Everything we experience is not done to us. The universe is not against us. Why would it be? It has no agenda, judgment, or personal vendetta against humanity, only pure acceptance and all unlimited potential. It does not take sides, though it may appear to at times. No, you are your own choreographer of the eternal dance between light and dark, night and day. The universe is within you and you within it. Accepting this or denying it can mean the vital difference between living abundantly in peace or existing painfully in torment. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can see that that quote could um could actually cause some people to get a bit cross. <laughs> yes. Just as, as I'm listening to it. Um I remember writing it I remember writing it, but um I think this I um it's very hard for people who who have been through extreme challenges and painful experiences to not want to blame um, somebody or God or uh, even um, I think the hardest thing and I have I've had I've talked to people about this before is 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 um, trying to understand why bad thing why suffering happens to us why bad things happen mm. to us and not to feel uh, not to feel uh, victimized um and by, by that i mean of course there are many people who are vic who have been victimized by other people but there's a difference between being vic being a victim and then living the victim life after that and the victim psychology but there's a lot of people i understand and i understand why stuck in that um that place of feeling that the world is just doing you know you know why me why is it why do things keep going wrong what what's god got against me what what is the universe got against me you know, why why is my life so difficult um why do i mean I, i've been through this myself and it, when i was younger and i still you know i still find it hard to watch the suffering and the pain in the world and mm -hmm. um but what i what i don't do is blame anything outside i don't i don't i don't think i don't believe that the universe is biased or God is biased. I don't believe that love energy 
has like an agenda or um, I think we are given this life and consciousness runs through us like a stream um, and we have the ability through the mind and, and, and our you know free will to make choices and life is is a is like a is, is it's a play it's a play of um individuals playing you know god playing through us love play i don't like always to use the word god because it it might conjure up the christian idea of god but I, so i suppose you know as we've talked to about it before mm -hmm. more the source energy from where we've come from before we were human, before we were even a thought or an idea or mm -hmm. um, so yeah I don't believe it has an agenda. I believe it, it it's a miracle that we were given a body, we're given a physical body to experience life through and mm -hmm. it's how we experience our life that matters. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot control anything actually or what or you, you cannot control what happens to you you cannot control um like you cannot control the weather you cannot control nature you cannot control other people although many people try um and i don't believe that you know source the ultimate you know um source is trying to control us in any way why you know as i say that why would it why would it want why would it have an agenda it wants to just it's just it's the gift of life that it's given us to just experience but what we don't like obviously is suffering we don't like painful experience we like the good bits but not the bad and when bad things happen we tend to look out of us outside of ourselves to to blame somebody or god because mm -hmm. that's ultimate blame isn't it if you can't if you can't justify blaming somebody then you kind of have to look elsewhere mm. to that. So I think the healing is 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 trying to understand mm. how to deal with with that with that feeling that everything's against you and what yeah. Hmm. Two uh, two comments I'd like to to share. Um, one because you talked about how. A lot of people, um, because of circumstances, and understandably so, may feel victimized, or they will look outside at the world and and feel almost traumatized, even though they're they're physically removed from it. I mean, there is much going on in the world that certainly doesn't seem to be have anything to do with with loving energy. Um, and I get asked occasionally, you know, Rob, when will this stop? So yeah. first, they might be looking out into the world and all the events going on and see the warring, see the travesty, see the degradation. And Rob, mm -hmm. when will this stop? And they said, it'll stop when we see it as something different. Yeah. For as long yeah. as you see it as the war, as long as you see it as the travesty, as long as you see it as the chaos, as long as you see it as the torment, that's all it's ever going to be. And equally, for those people who uh, bring it in, bring it inside into their own space and their own lives and their own body and um and again they may be feeling suffering or victimization um you know rob when will this stop it'll stop when you stop seeing it as what you're seeing it currently and, yeah yeah um. you know, and this and the second point um i i wanted to share because it, it resonated from something you you've said and i can't remember specifically what you did but i i feel so blessed of late that i find myself laughing at life more and more yeah. and um you know i recently put out a post on facebook that uh, some people found humor some people didn't but it, it i said something like um i'm quite convinced life is a comedy show <laughs> where I'm the main character and the audience is having a really good laugh and I have learned how healing it can be to occasionally laugh along with them 
Yes, and you know that's something I've always said is don't take it, don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. Because what is it you're taking seriously? Do you know what I mean? What is it that you're holding so precious and so um, guarding so so furiously? What is what is it? If you if you look for that thing, if you look inside yourself, if you close your eyes and, and look for that person that you're supposedly protecting and with pride, with with whatever it is that is your particular theme in life, um, can you actually find that person? Can you actually find anything there? You know, it's like we we're um, we're so uh, we're so lost in this sort of survival as an individual, and and um, we're we're so easily offended and and um, I think we, we get lost in in preserve in that sense of having to preserve who we believe we are but mm. when you go looking for that person that you believe you are mm. really I mean even if you look in the mirror if you look in the mirror and you look in your eyes what do you see who who are who are we to be so precious about about ourselves and I, that's not you know that might sound does that you know does that sound hard or no i think what i'm trying to say is that it is a play it is a comedy i'm the same i've been not i i've always been able to laugh at myself i think my father taught me how to do that but um when you the more you detach yourself the more you can stand back out of the dramas that are going on all around the world and all and it just just mm. everybody is is living in some kind of drama mm. if the more you can just step back out of those mm. and look in as an observer even at yourself and your own dramas your own behavior mm -hmm. you start to see how ridiculous it all is mm. and not you know ridiculous as in it's not worth living or anything like that but just how mm. the games we play and how we convince ourselves of the things that mm -hmm. we actually corner ourselves into believing that um, you know we're here to suffer, we're here to you know, and, and we, we we create circumstances where where we will suffer because, as you said, if you're going to see that, it will stop when you stop seeing it as you are seeing it. It's the only way. If you're the main character in your own comedy show or your own play of life then you can kind of um you can be engrossed in that play of life or if you're the main character and the director and say you're all the first all the players as well then you can actually as the director stand back and look in and see okay this isn't actually real it's a play of life and these characters are there and it's creating a really believable story for everybody to see but actually i know as the director that it is merely a play and if we introduce into that play if we take it as a play because people see plays or dramas or theater or movies as mm -hmm. fantasy to a degree although there is real life but if we see it as a, a mere play that's been created mm -hmm. and and then it begins and it ends we can see that any the director has made it it has directed it in a certain way and it gets a certain response from from the audience but if if we recognize that <laughs> that we at any given time can change the theme of the play or the movements in the play or the mm -hmm. lines in the play mm -hmm. we can make it you know a, you can make it a tragedy a romance a comedy mm -hmm. um or all of it Mm -hmm. But still, it's still a play, and how mm -hmm. how seriously does the audience take the actors once the play is over, two hours say, and they get up there, they might meet the actors outside in the foyer and talk to them, and they're just you know they're just mm -hmm. the same as them, they're just they're just the same, they're just all the same. But um, I know a lot of people who've been very who are in a very in that state of believing that life 
just from the suffering. Um, and as you said earlier, there's no doubt that there is atrocities going on in the world, just awful, and it breaks my heart to see it. And I, when I was younger, I just I wanted to save everyone. I wanted to change it all. And that I now understand with age, unfortunately, <laughs> um, and hopefully a little bit more wisdom that I and beauty. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Bless you. You're so sweet. Um, that I can't. All I can do is change my own drama, my own play, the way I view mm -hmm. my life, and that will have an effect on the whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we've talked about before, the ripples the, that will affect. And mm -hmm. if I, I can choose, I and mean, people don't, they say, I have no choice. These things happen to me, they continue to happen to me. I have no choice but to suffer. Can't you see, you know, I keep being let down, I keep being lied to, or whatever. I have no choice. How, you know, how, how else am I supposed to take that? Mm -hmm. other than a, an assault kind of thing mm -hmm. but actually you do have a choice mm -hmm. when you think you have no choice you will have no choice and these things will keep happening mm -hmm. and you will live in that perpetual state of feeling kind of that 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 life is about suffering but mm -hmm. if you can for me anyway in my life and I can I really I suppose only speak for myself that the suffering, if you, if you like, or the experiences I've been through have, as I said in the quote, brought me into the, the I mean, I, I guess it will keep growing, but into the most profound realisation of love mm -hmm. and compassion and, mm -hmm. and um, acceptance and peace, not always, of course, you know, we get hiccups, but mostly to be able to stand back and not want to try and, and to understand that whatever happens to us, we can learn from mm -hmm. and, and we can change. Mm -hmm. um, we can be grateful or we can be bitter. You know, we can, we can, we can. And do you know what I think? I think if you embrace everything that comes your way with an open heart and an open mind, and you take away, if you, you, know, you try not to um, judge or manipulate the situation, but you just see it, whatever happens, you kind of embrace, you sort of say, well, whatever comes, I'm going to deal with it, I'm going to, I'm going to look at it, but not, not drown in it, and I'm going to see where it takes me afterwards. Because what we don't often see is where it takes us after we've been through something mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. we only get lost in the pain or in the difficult situation mm -hmm. and i think for me the bit one of the biggest things for me is to always always trust and accept and actually it's it's kind of it's a deep knowing with me um that there is always a bigger bigger picture of more you know and that is ultimate consciousness, I think. But mm -hmm. the things that happen to us are perfect for us, I believe. That I believe they're perfect for us. And that would sound awful because if you were to say, well, what about a child being abused? How can you say that's perfect? But there's more going on here than we than we know. Yes. Yeah. You know, you've got something to... I, I, there's, there's a... Um... A veil might not be the right word, but there's something that lies over all our existence yes. that um, is beckoning to us. And it's through our, our perceived pain. It's through our felt pain. It's through our traumas. It's through our hardships that... Um, we're given the opportunity to see this broader connective tissue, this broader connectedness among yeah. all of life. Yes, yeah. I, I, I've used the word veil a lot, and I, I used to, as a child, say that. I used to say, I used to feel that I was just mm. veil, and on the other side of the veil was, was the truth. Mm. And 
and the where we where I was and my parents and my friends and we were the just just it, but it's such a flimsy veil but mm -hmm. you it's 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 fine enough to kind of keep us in a sort of alternate reality as such but I do really believe that adversity and pain and what we go through it brings us it brings us closer to crack to, to instead of perceiving that veil as you can't go through it it actually becomes something that you just walk through mm -hmm. so for a long time in some people's lives it remains there as an um, impenetrable separation from mm -hmm. the from the totality from the truth from mm -hmm. but for others who who um, who have perhaps learnt and embraced or somehow found a way through what's happening to it, like the, the shell opening you know like, like there's a there's a quote isn't there about when the shell cracks open the light the light can enter and something kind of somehow experiences in life no matter how, the heart and the hardest one can it seem to kind of impact our shells as human beings mm -hmm. or that that veil perhaps that a flimsy veil that might be so kind of cracks it open so that the light and for that's for me that's exactly my experience that the, the life has been very traumatic very even what very difficult you could say on one level but every time I've come through and there's been um this awake a new awakening a new birth through every single experience mm -hmm. um and i i wish i could show everybody that that's that's how it is but you can't you can only if people will get there in their own time but mm -hmm. see i believe i believe that we know before we come into the, the human body that what we're coming into i believe that you know con you know ultimate conscious source it just it, it 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 has this ultimate intelligence not intelligence as we feel but there is an intelligence about it uh, all potential all creative energy and the when you think about the the creative energy that of birth and, and you know cre creating a child I and mean, that's the, that's the most profound isn't it of, of creation and i believe there's a there was a there's a knowing there and then we kind of lose we lose sight of that as we become invested and attached to the physical world and the physical body but if we could only just um allow whatever comes to do whatever it's to kind of not if a difficult situation I might I'm blabbering on sorry if a difficult situation comes your way <laughs> if a difficult situation comes your way you can either like um like the fight or flight thing you can either like oh not, you know resist 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 which makes that that situation even harder or you can say okay come on come in do what you know show me show me what it is that you're trying to show me believe that everything you may not even understand it you may not even understand why it's coming away but once you've got through it once the cracks get bigger once that shell then falls apart and the light pours in completely your heart will open your mind will open your soul will be able your spirit will be able to understand the whole pathway the whole play why it happened what you were doing actually creating that play from the beginning you know um creating your path to truth i think mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i think there is a there's a consciousness within us no matter how much or little we're aware of it that is pushing always for us to realize it Self again through life. Wake up. Wake up. Wake and up. If you go, if you're some, yeah, this is that's a really good. Um, sometimes you just say the smallest things, but yeah, if you're asleep and someone comes and just strokes your head gently and is really and sits there with you and just watches you and thinks, oh, how lovely, beautiful. 
you're probably not going to wake up out of that sleep because it's nice and soothing. And if someone comes and smacks you around the head, <laughs> I know that's a bit harsh, you're going to wake up and you're going to see the room, the you know. So that's you may pretty, initially be, you may initially be traumatized. You may oh absolutely you'll be shocked and hurt. It will hurt, but you will be alive and awake mm -hmm. and experiencing and but then you can then you can say to that person you can say oh, i wish you'd left me asleep and i just want to sleep all through everything or you can say well and thanks. many people do and many people do the, yeah they, they sleep walk through life um and or that person could say, well, okay, that was a bit harsh, but thanks for waking me up because now I can really go and explore and, mm. you know, see. And I can decide whether to be cross with you for waking me up or grateful kind of thing. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, yeah. I think it's a hard one to talk about in words to get across because it's um words again fail us to of course you know I, th um, I think you know my sense and my experience in watching as well as feeling m my way through my own journey is that at a point we accept the gift that the universe has given to us as trust and faith mm -hmm. and trust and faith that to you know really sh paraphrase you know your initial sharing and that is life is not happening to us but it's happening for us oh, yes. and um i mean it, it might sound like a, a trite saying and you know i didn't I, I'm not the author of that, I've heard it elsewhere, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful surrendering acceptance and a knowing that there's something more here than meets the eye. Absolutely. There's something else going on and if I can still myself long enough, I can tap into that magnificence of all that is unfolding and let go of my judgments of attaching good, bad, right, wrong to it. Yes, yes, yes. It's like rumors quote, isn't it? Out beyond all ideas of wrongdoings and right doings, there's a field, I'll meet you there. And it, I mean, it's particularly challenging when we're in the tornado. It's particularly challenging when we're in the depth of the despair of when we're it. in the torment when we you know when um when we're in hell it is you know it's, but it is. but then there's that beautiful saying i've heard it said um you know that the student comes to the teacher and says teacher 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 i'm going through hell and the teacher smiles says keep going Oh. Don't yeah. stop there. No. You're going through hell. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many people try to stop, you see. And when they try to either they stop or freeze in the middle of their hell and, and it's a, it kind of becomes a or they try to resist it. Mm -hmm. But if you flow with it, mm -hmm. it's like a journey. It's like a journey you might take across country, say across a mountainous Mm. Um, a mountainous uh, landscape perhaps with with no smooth roads or you know uh, nice cafes to stop off at and then you've got you run out of water and your car breaks down all these things happen as you're going along this road but you know that you're on your way to somewhere really beautiful and that's why you chose that particular journey in the first place it was to explore it was to experience the journey and it was to ultimately arrive at your destination um, and what happens along the way, you have no control over, you just have to, as it happens, you deal with it. But your focus is the ultimate destination and learning. How much do you learn every time you go on a journey? Um, 
So every time your car breaks down, you can think, oh, ugh, the universe, again, again. Or you can think, well, what's this right now? What is this teaching me? I could go crazy. I could, I could get really impatient or I could be patient and still. In fact, actually, this happened to me. I went away recently and it happened to me on the journey there. I went up into the mountains and I was picked up in a car which looked about 160 years old <laughs> and I thought and it was quite a long journey from the airport to up into the mountains and it was probably one of the hardest journeys I've ever had to make the car uh, we, well once we, we kept getting lost for start I was extremely tired because I'm not you know, traveling is hard for me because of my, my my physical conditions um, we the car started to make noises and grunt and shake and steam started to pour out a bit and eventually it just stopped in the middle of a, of a, a narrow lane on a, going up a mountain in a kind of very deserted it was like desert conditions 40 degrees in temperature no water we ran out of water and I you know there was the pent potential that the, there was black stuff coming out of the engine bubbling up and I was thinking I, I had the potential there to panic to think you know we are we're still half an hour an hour away from our destination uh, we could get attacked we could we could we could um, we, we, we've just got no water we could just we could literally die out here if no one you know but I, 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 I chose not to do any of those things and I chose to sit quietly and actually, I was laughing. <laughs> I was laughing um, at the whole thing. And I was, and I, you know, this might sound, and actually some people have, have made fun of my, my best friend and a few people have made fun of me for saying this, but I actually sat still and I, I said a prayer. I just basically said, I asked for help. I just said, you know, could you please, could someone, can, can, can some help? And I am not lying here, but two to five minutes after I said that a woman drove past in a camper van and we hadn't seen anybody else that could take us and she stopped and um, some other guys had previously stopped and um, they couldn't take us the rest of the way but they pulled the car off the road because we were right in the middle of the road she stopped we looked she offered us lift and she took us the rest of the way and not one for one moment on that whole journey probably took about four or five hours where it should take me two did I panic or feel scared? Because I trusted that I would be okay. And it was a hard journey. I was exhausted, but I was laughing and it worked out. And the thing about life is somehow or other, it always works out. And you can make it hard for yourself by resisting and getting angry and getting into a state. Or you can just, as you say, flow with it, go through the hell and you know believe that there is a greater picture a greater view a greater destination that you will reach and along the way a lot of knowledge a lot of wisdom ah mm. uh, we out of time by any chance it would be a wonderful place to <laughs> i just had that feeling <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful to be back with you <laughs> and we'll see each other in a fortnight, yes? Yes. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Lorna. Lovely, lovely to see you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.